lesson is actually coming from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8. And before we uh, start there, I do want to give you just a little bit of a background from uh, Mark, chapter 15, verses 42 through 47. And before we start, let's have a word of prayer. Great God, Father, we want to thank you and, and we just praise and glorify your name, Father, for this the most holiest day of the Christian calendar. And Father, right now, we just ask you to just anoint, Father, all those who are listening, all those who are here. Oh, God, Father, that they will receive the blessings from on high. Now, Father, we will remember this day, oh, God, Father, continuously as our Lord and Savior sacrificed himself for salvation of all mankind. We ask your God, Father, to anoint this thy servant, Father, not my will, but thy will be done. That all, Father, will hear from thee and be glorified in your name. Jesus Christ, our Lord, do we pray? Amen. Amen. And, be, and again, before we uh, uh, actually go into the uh, actual lesson of uh, the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verses 1 through 8, I want to touch on a few things, oh God, uh, 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 to help us to get to the place of uh, Mark 16. By looking at uh, Mark 15, 42 to 47. Now, I'm not, go I'm not gonna read all of 42 to 47, but I do, I do wanna touch on some, uh, on some key points. The first, let's look at 42, uh, uh, 42, I think, uh, 42 to 44. Mark 15, it says, and now when the even was come, because it was the preparation, that is the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Am uh, Arimathea, an honor, honorable counselor, which was which also waited for the kingdom of God, came and went in boldly unto Pilate and craved the body of Jesus. In verse 44, and Pilate marveled <clears throat> if he were already dead, and calling unto him the centurion, he asked him whether he had been any while dead. Now, I, I, I want this uh, 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 to hopefully to give us a sense of what's actually taking place here. First, uh, we're dealing with the Jewish Sabbath. Now, Jewish Sabbath uh, actually begins on the evening of Friday and ends on the evening of Saturday. Amen? And that's the whole 24 hour of the Sabbath. Now, it, it, was, it was getting too close. They had to have Jesus down off that cross in the Jewish mind and buried before the Sabbath actually begun. Now, what Pilate does not know here is that Jesus is already dead. He's already passed on. So therefore, uh, our, uh, the Joseph of, our, of uh, Arimathea, who it says here is an a, a honorable counselor, uh, did not want Jesus to be hanging on a cross during, uh, 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 during the Sabbath. Now, time is short here. So he rushes to Pilate, the governor, and inquires and seeks a permission to take Jesus down and put him and, and bury him and prepare him for, uh, uh, for the burial. Now, what is striking is Pilate does not know that he's dead yet. Uh, and Pilate is actually shocked that he's dead, uh, which tells me that in previous uh, crucifixions, uh, people uh, still hang, hung, around, hung around a little bit longer. But he's surprised that Jesus is dead, but he also wants to make sure that he's dead. So what he does is he sends a centurion, uh, he asks the centurion, the centurion verifies that he is dead, and he sends the centurion to also re-verify that he's dead. And when he is sure that he is actually dead, he allows uh, Joseph of Arimathea to go and bring Jesus down and to take him to the tomb and to bury him. Now this is actually significant uh, because if you look at the history and, and so forth, it, it would take time to prepare a body in the Jewish, in the Jewish tradition of, of burial. But here we have, we're going to see that it was rushed. They did what they did quickly because the time was too short to properly prepare Jesus' body for the necessary burial. So they take him down and... Uh, uh, I'm just going to uh, uh, jump to 45 and when he knew it uh, uh, from Pilate and when he knew it of the centurion he gave the body of, uh, to Joseph and, and he brought fine linen and took him down wrapped him in the linen laid him in a sepulcher which was hewn out of rock rolled a stone unto the door and verse 47 is also, is also uh, 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 amazing 
Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph beheld where he was laid. In other words, these two Marys, they wanted to know specifically where they were going to lay Jesus. Amen. So they actually was following them. Now, we're not sure if they were following close behind or far behind, but they were following to make sure they understood and knew where Jesus was buried. Because again, they, understood, they knew that he was not properly prepared. Uh, his body was not properly prepared for, for burial. They did a rush job. So they followed him into, uh, uh, to uh, find out to make sure they knew where he was at. Then we come down to our lesson today. Again, uh, Mark 7, uh, 16, verses 1 through 8, and let us read it. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher at the rising of the sun, and they said among themselves, now notice this question, who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, notice that right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Yes, ye, ye, ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. Seven, but go your way, tell the disciples and Peter, that he goes before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. And they, in verse eight, and they, and they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Amen. Now, if you look at these uh, verses carefully, the first thing you will notice is there is no excitement here. There is no excitement that Jesus was raised. There is fear. They're concerned. They're worried. Because if you remember, what did Jesus say? He, uh, he, he told the, uh, the Pharisees and, 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 the, uh, and uh, the nation earlier that uh, if you destroy this temple in three days, I will raise it. They thought he was talking about the temple, the, Jew, the, uh, uh, the temple of Jerusalem. He was talking about his body. And all through the teachers to his disciples, he was still telling them that I will be resurrected. I will be killed and I will be resurrected. But, not, but they did not want to believe that. So at the early morning when the Sabbath was passed, now notice this is early in the morning, early Sunday morning, that they're coming with the, the, uh, 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 the, the spices and everything else ready to prepare Jesus properly, to put everything that they need to be uh, uh, on him for a really proper burial, amen? But the question remains is, wait a minute, the tomb has a stone in, uh, in front of it. So it's a good question, and these are women. Now, it's, it's, it's a few men could not even move that stone. But isn't it a beautiful thing on how the Lord God has prepared everything in the due time for his, for his will to be done? And we see Mary, Mary and Solomon walking towards the tomb. Just, just walking. They're not in no hurry. They, 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 they don't know that Christ is risen. Amen. And they go and they ask a question. I wonder if there's going to be somebody there to roll away the tomb, amen, so that we can do what we need to do. But to their surprise, they get to the tomb. See it, rolled away, uh, and, and see it, rolled away. And, uh, and, and then they go into the sepulcher. Now, when they, when, I, when they say they go in, these are chambers. They didn't look inside the sepulcher. They didn't step inside. They actually went all the way in to where Jesus was laid, amen, or when the, where they thought he was laid. So, so far, everything is going good. Again, you know, some, they're, they're sad. Uh, they may, maybe even have tears in their eyes, but they're sad. They're not excited. They're just going to do what they believe they do because they love Jesus, amen. So they enter the tomb, and then they see a strange sight. They see a man, a young man, a, 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 a young man, young man meaning strength sitting on the right side of where Jesus was laid. 
Now the question would be, how would you, <laughs> what would your, would your reaction be? You know he died. You know he was laid there. You come and see a man all dressed in white, just sitting there straight up, as though he was waiting for them. He knew they was coming. Amen. Now you look at other gospels, uh, uh, our gospels, then you will see it says that there's an angel on top of the uh, uh, on top of the the uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the the where is that? The, I forgot what you call it already. The stone. Have mercy. On top of the stone. And then here, and then here he says he's inside a tomb. Uh, remember, they're angels. So he can be at the top, and all of a sudden, uh, uh, just boom, right inside the tomb. Amen. But he's there. So they're looking. They're kind of surprised. They're scared. They're frightened. Uh, and uh, he looks at them and simply says, do not be afraid. Amen. And the beauty part of this, in verse 6, be not afraid. You seek Jesus of Nazareth. He knows why they're here. He knows what, who they're looking for. Now, he says, the angel, he is risen. He is not here. And encourages them to look at where he was supposed to be laid. Now, I'm going to stop there for a minute. We know that Jesus is risen. Today we know because we have the word of God. But do you notice the reaction of the ladies here? They're just plain scared. They don't see Jesus. They, ha they have not yet comprehended his resurrection. Even though the angel is telling them he is risen. So right again, there's no big assignment yet. They're just scared. And as they're scared, they're looking and wondering, probably praying as, as well, what is going on here? But after the, after the angel tells him, that Jesus is risen. Look. Look and see for yourself. What do he also instruct them? Leave. Now, how do you think they left? You think they just left walking? Or nonchalantly? Da, 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 da. No. They ran out that tomb, still scared, amazed, but with fear. And as of yet, saints, they still have not fully comprehended of the beauty of the resurrection, of the prophecies that were said from years and years and centuries ago that Christ Jesus has resurrected just like he said he would, just like he promised. They still haven't comprehended that yet. But he tells them, the angel informs them in verse 7, go your way and do what? Tell his disciples and Peter. Now, I've heard messages all over the, uh, uh, concerning Peter. We all know what Peter did. Peter denied Christ three times. Peter was embarrassed. Peter was ashamed. He felt unworthy. Amen. But why? It, it, it was very important that the message got to Peter and the disciples. And he specifically called out Peter because it, I, I believe that if he did not do it that way, Peter would not have came. Peter would not have, uh, 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 would still be in hiding or wherever he, he, he's at. But it's important that they make sure that you tell Peter that Jesus is risen. Amen. Jesus loved Peter. He loved his disciples. So therefore, as you look at that, he's saying, tell the disciples and Peter that Christ Jesus is gone before you. In other words, he, he, he is ahead of you, waiting for you in Galilee. Amen. In Galilee. And therefore, what he wants you to do is to come, to come and meet him there, where you can see him face to face. Amen. And they went out quickly, verse 8, and fled again uh, from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither they said anything to any man, for they were afraid. They were still scared. And they ran. And if you go down further in the scriptures, you'll discover the beauty that when they confront the disciples and tell them the story 
and tell them what they have seen. So as we look at Resurrection Sunday, the, 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 the from uh, 16, 1 through 8, and you look at it carefully, they didn't understand. They loved Jesus, but they still didn't understand. And today we have a whole lot of folks, even on Resurrection Sunday, who still don't understand, who still refuse to believe that Christ Jesus has been risen from the dead. Now today, we should be excited. We should be jumping for joy. We should be having a hallelujah good time that our Savior who died for us was raised from the dead with all power in his hands. Not to be afraid, but to glorify God in all that he has done for us. And these ladies, three of them, eventually as time, as they go through, uh, through the scriptures, as we see, eventually they will realize that Jesus has kept his promise. He didn't leave them. He didn't forsake them. He did what he said he had to do. He did what he promised that he would do. And he's the only one that was ever raised from the dead. Amen? The Son of God. All these other prophets and everything else, you can find them, their bones are still buried. But Jesus, no bones, no nothing, was still raised from the dead. And he rose early Sunday morning. Do we know exact time? No. But we know he rose early Sunday morning. And because of that is why we have peace with God, why we have the blessings of God, why when we accept the Lord Christ in our hearts, in our minds, we are able to go forth with joy and with love one for another. All because of the promise kept, the promise assured. Amen. So therefore, as you continue to go forth and celebrate Resurrection Sunday, rejoice and be glad. Rejoice and understand that the Lord Christ not only died, but he actually rose. And not only did he rise, I may even go further, that he will return again to, to, to get his church without spot and without wrinkle. Are you going to be in that number? Are you going to uh, celebrate today on Resurrection Sunday with joy and with thanksgiving, knowing that life is beautiful in Christ? On Resurrection Sunday, are your spirits going to be resurrected knowing what has been, how good God is, and how good God continues to be? On Resurrection Sunday, will you be able to rise in your spirits to give God all the praise and glory, knowing that the hope of glory is still to come. Resurrection Sunday is a, not only just the holiest day of the year, but it's also the day that where we can actually look forward for his coming again from this earth. Amen? So let us celebrate Resurrection Sunday. Let us not be afraid. Let us not hide. But let us, re let us believe and know by faith that Jesus Christ was, ri was risen this day as the, as the prophets had foretold you long ago, as the scriptures have teach you to taught us long ago, again, as the promises have been kept. He fulfilled it, but the job is not yet done. Because of his resurrection, we have the right to, the, the, the right to be with him in due season and to be a witness and a light to the world that we serve a risen God, a risen Savior, one and the only one who has ever risen from the dead. So let's praise God. Let's give him all praise and glory. And remember, once again, Resurrection Sunday is a day of thanksgiving, a day of celebration, a day of joy, a day of honoring the Lord our God, a day of just having a hallelujah good time knowing that he lives and he lives today. We pray that something was said that will help you this day as you go, to, uh, uh, as you uh, listen at home and we hope and pray that you will get out to come on, come on in to open door or wherever the Lord leads you uh, uh, leads you uh, uh, to a church home, amen, and celebrate with the congregation, celebrate with your friend, with family. We all should be coming together and celebrating together 
of the beauty of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, on this Resurrection Sunday. To God be the glory, great things he has, is, and continues to do. Uh, be, pray, be blessed, be strengthened, be encouraged, and by the way, put a smile on your face. Amen. It's a good day to give God some praise. Amen. Let us pray. Great God, Father, we want to thank you. We want to thank you, God, Father, for the lesson, this, uh, this, uh, a lesson on Resurrection Sunday. We want to thank you, God, Father, for our sisters, oh God, Father, the, the two Marys and Solomon, Father, who though they, they have fear, who though they may not have understood at that, at that moment, but yet and still, oh God, Father, as we have the word and the testimony, oh God, Father, that you have you were risen, oh God, Father, and right now you are there safely at the, at the right hand of the Father in heaven, oh God, Father, not only there, oh God, Father, but with all power in your hand, oh God, Father, to guide us and lead us, oh God, Father, to more truth, to more, uh, to, to more strength, to more joy, oh God, Father, in thee. So, Father, right now we ask, thee, we ask you to continue thy anointed, Father, upon the service, oh God, Father, that would, uh, that would take place. And, Father, for all the programs that's going on, Father, we just ask you, Father, to bless that all of our attention, Father, would be, uh, would be on the truth, and that is Christ Jesus has risen. In Jesus Christ, our Lord, do we pray. Amen.